on the news tonight, over 1,000 dead as bomb for earthquake hits Morocco near Marrakesh. President Bola Tinubu OK's construction of 1,000 houses in seven northern states. And gunmen behead divisional police officer in River State. Glad to have you join us on News Now. I am Mary Kanu. We begin the news in Morocco as a powerful earthquake has killed more than 1,000 people and injured hundreds more the country's deadliest in more than six decades. Toppling houses in remote mountain villages where rescuers are digging through rubble for survivors. The quake struck in Morocco's high Atlas Mountains late on Friday night, damaging historic buildings in Marrakesh, the nearest city to the epicenter, while the most badly affected areas were in the mountains nearby. Many of the fatalities are said to be in to reach areas south of Marrakesh. The number of people killed is also expected to rise in the coming hours, while over 205 people are in a critical condition. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu has extended his heartfelt condolences to King Mohammed VI following the de devastating earthquake. And President Bola Tinubu has approved the construction of 1,000 houses in Sukoto, Kabi, Katsine, Zamfara, Kaduna, Niger, and Banu states. Vice President Kashim Shatima made this known as the inauguration of projects executed by the Borno state government in the last 100 days. Shatima said that the housing projects were part of a broad plan by the federal government to address conflicts in the north. More details in this next report. The arrival of the Vice President, Kashim Shatima, is met with cheers from a jubilant crowd, particularly school children, who have gathered to witness the commissioning of various projects executed by the state governor, Babagana Zulum, within 100 days since his inauguration. Earlier on arrival in Maiduguri, the Vice President paid homage at the Shehu of Baroness Palace in the company of the Minister of Agriculture, Abu Bakr Kiari, some legislators from National and State Assembly, the Deputy Governors of Borno, Gombe and Taraba States, among others. Among the 77 new projects completed in 100 days of the Zulum administration are schools and health centers, all within the Meduguri metropolis commissioned by the vice president. The vice president commended the vision and leadership of the Borno state governor, particularly in addressing the welfare of the people. We are extremely lucky in having him as our leader, as our governor, as our brother. Most importantly, your Royal Highnesses, Governor Zulum and I have the best of relationships. We have become the reference point in relationship management between a successor and predecessor in modern day Nigerian politics. I want to thank him for all the empathy and support over the years, and most importantly for Putin Borno Pes. He also revealed that the president had approved the construction of 1,000 houses and 50 billion naira to the National Emergency Management Agency, all in a bid by the government to address the conflict in the north. He has approved the construction of 1,000 houses in Sokoto, in Kebbi, in Kasina, in Zampara, in Kaduna, and it's a political gesture in Niger and Benue with all the ancillary facilities of clinics, schools, veterinary clinics, ranches for the livestock of the Fulanis. Also speaking of the commission in the state governor called for support from Borno state residents, saying collaboration between the federal and state government will achieve major developments. This administration is only 100 days old and they are studying the atmosphere and in inshallah in the fullness of time we shall benefit from the deputy of democracy of this administration. The Vice President is very much aware 
of the problems of the problems of Borno's dead. And inshallah, very soon we shall see light at the end of the tunnel. Zulum also said that the president was aware of the challenges confronting the state and would make efforts to address them. Mary Kanu, TV360, Nigeria. And gunmen suspected to be cultists have beheaded Baku Angbashim, the divisional police officer in charge of Ohada in Ohada East, local government area of River State. The officer, a superintendent of police, was beheaded by suspected members of Iceland court group in Odumedu, a community in the council area. The attackers were said to have laid an ambush for him while the DPO and other officers were planning to raid some criminal hideouts in the area. River State Police spokesperson Grace Ringekoko, who confirmed the killing, said the DPO was shot and killed after his fellow police team members exhausted the ammunition during a shootout with the court group. She further said that the Commissioner of Police in the state, Polycap Mwonye, has expressed deep determination to track down the killers. The Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Festus Kiamo, has said that he suspended further actions on Nigeria Air and Airport concession because of complaints not from members of the public alone but also agencies of government. Kiamo had last week announced the suspension of the two projects which were part of the aviation roadmap of the last administration. Speaking when he inspected the ongoing second runway project of the Namdi Aziko International Airport Abuja, Kiamo said that the projects would remain suspended until the government takes a final decision on them. This next report has more details. Since his inauguration, new aviation minister Festus Kiamo has been on an inspection tour of the airports in Lagos and Abuja, suspending some projects and commencing new ones. The minister kicked off his inspection tour in Lagos, where he directed all airlines to vacate the old terminal at the Muritala Mohammed International Airport from October 1, 2023. Kiamo also announced the suspension of airport concessions and the Nigeria Air Project. There are issues already on the ground before I came, concession and all of that. For now, I have suspended all of that until I brief Mr. President as to what is happening regarding all of those noises going on, including the issue of the Nigerian Air. I have given directly to suspend everything until I brief Mr. President fully. Just after his tour of the Lagos airports, the minister's next stop is the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport of Buja, where he inspected the ongoing second runway project, which, according to him, will be delivered within the next 12 months. We have started the FCT. You know, I had to go and meet the FCT minister and to get that project off the ground in terms of clearing the obstacles on the way. As of today, the report I have is that the money we paid to FCT for them to pay to uh, the settlers there, they have started paying them and they have started moving. I asked the CECC people who are doing the project, they said they are giving, giving me a date of sometime next week for them to clear the sites and move to sites. So we are going to invite Mr. President to come and commission it and um, it's a project Nigerians have been waiting for forever. It has been a controversial project from Mabas and Joss time to now, but thankfully this government is set you know, to commence that project. Clearing the air over the suspensions of some projects which were part of the aviation roadmap of the last administration, Kiamo says complaints from the public and government agencies led to this decision. No final decision has been taken on all of this, but I won't be here to be very irresponsible of me as a minister to come here and agencies of government, and I want to tell you that you will know later, are raising red flags here and there, and I will keep quiet. I'm not talking about even people, Nigerians complaining. Agencies of government are raising red flags about both projects. And I, as a functionary of government, as a minister, will then wave all of those red flags away. That's why I said, and then, you know, people were already putting machineries in motion to commit themselves. So it is to save them and save us. The minister has also set up a task force to resolve the challenges of relocating international airlines to the new terminal after Muritala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, following the recent fire outbreak at the old terminal. Mary Kanu, TV360, Nigeria. 
And the agitation for a southeastern president in Nigeria has persisted for years, sparking discussions on the path to achieving this goal. Lending his voice to the topic, the special advisor to Governor Babajide Stanwalu on drainage and water resources, Joy Bukwe, says a president from southeast Nigeria would require extensive groundwork from supporters across the nation. In an interview with TV360 Nigeria, Ibukwe emphasized that politics transcends merely religious affiliation as Nigeria is a country with diverse ethnic groups. You have to have the structures across Nigeria. It's not an emergency thing like what we saw. P2P was in PDP. Within a very short time, he moved into, into labor. And you think you can win elections in Nigeria just like that? No, 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 no. You have to build the bridges. You have to build the friendships. You have to build the structures. And it is not a day job. It's not an emergency job. Something that you can just do and go. That is the difference between them and us. I have a background. I know how we build this party from AD to AC to ACN to APC. Mm. We build, we, we, we mark our time. We connected. We reached out to people. We consulted. It's not if you wake up one morning, you say you are doing, uh, this is a religious war, uh, and you start, start preaching uh, 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 hate and bigotry, and people will just vote you. The First Lady of Lagos, Ibija Kesomolu, has called on women to unite to address the socio-political challenges confronting them. Samolu made the call during an induction and award ceremony organized by the National Council of Women's Societies Nigeria, Lagos State Chapter, where new executive members were appointed. More details in this next report. Women have a duty to promote, unify and assist. This was the general agreement at the induction and award of excellence ceremony of the executive members of the National Council of Women's Society, Lagos State Chapter. The event began with the constitutional requirement of the group to dissolve office holders who have actively served for five years. After 15 executive officers were dissolved, the newly elected member took an oath of office, promising to be devoted to their new appointments. Presentation of awards also formed the high point of the event to honor hard work and positive contributions to the society. Speaking at the induction and award ceremony, the First Lady of Lagos State, Ibijo Kesonwolo, said the state is fully ready to support the council. Women take care of women, women taking care of women, um, lifting each other up, encouraging uh, mobilization of women, facilitating their political and economic empowerment encouraging women to go into governance and politics. And uh, as I read again, we have things to do with promoting the economic and social welfare and progress of women, youth, people with disabilities, children, laying emphasis on education, training, health, vocational education, entrepreneurial education, economic and social empowerment. Ladies and gentlemen, the National Council of Women's Society is not just about women going for trips or traveling up and down. There is work to be done. There is a lot of work to be done. Whether you're an executive or you're not an executive, there is a lot of work to be done. On her part, the outgoing president, NCWS Lagos State, implored all association members to offer their full cooperation for the progress of the association. All members of the executive local government president and indeed all members of the NCWF Legal Team for your cooperation thus far. I implore you all to extend the same cooperation and support to the incoming president and the executive towards the green NCWF Legal Team. In her inaugural speech, the newly appointed president, Mamunat Ajao, charged the executive council member to uphold the ethics of the society. We have to plead to them, let them do well, let them represent women well, let them know, know, know proud, so that all your deeds you put it down, people will like you. Ajao also promised to serve diligently with other members of the executive to lift women in Lagos State. Sydney Okafor, 
TV360, Lagos. The Centre for Citizens with Disabilities has advocated for inclusive governance for persons with disabilities. The Executive Director of the CCD, David Ayele, made the call at a press conference held in Lagos, raising an alarm over the government's unyielding stance against those with impairments. On his part, Okpeolu Akionla, the Executive Director of Access Tech Innovation, who said persons with disabilities make up 10 to 15 percent of the country's population, implores the government to pay more attention to them. With a population of over 30 million in Nigeria, persons with disabilities remain the, the largest minority group in our country. This underscores the need to prioritize disability rights welfare and development in all government activities and programs. However, we are deeply concerned about the apparent disinterest and marginalization of persons with disabilities by the current government. We, are, we have carefully tracked the activities of President Mohammed Bola Ahmed Tunubu, his manifesto, inaugural speech, national broadcast, political appointments, as well as social welfare packages, and we observe consistent exclusion of people with disabilities in Nigeria during these 100 days in office. Persons with disability constitute about between 10 to 15 percent of the national population, and if um, that kind of size of people is ignored or excluded, then true development of the nation cannot take place. So bringing this discourse about um, uh, exclusion from governance, which is where decisions are made, which is where strategies are planned, which is where resources are allocated, I mean, we have to think about it seriously. And I think this, this um, event brings that to the forefront, into the front burner. And I want government to take it very serious. I want every citizen of Nigeria to take this very serious because that's the way to go forward as a nation. We'll take a break here, but still to come, African Union formally joins G20 at Delhi Summit. Details of this and more when we return. Join us again. Thank you for staying. A recap now of our top stories. A powerful earthquake has killed more than 1,000 people and injured hundreds more in Morocco, the country's deadliest in more than six decades. The quake struck in Morocco's high Atlas Mountains late on Friday night, damaging historic buildings in Marrakech, the nearest city to the epicenter. The number of people killed is expected to rise in the coming hours. We also told you that President Bola Tinubu has approved the construction of 1,000 houses in Sokoto, Kebi, Katsina, Zampara, Kaduna, Niger, and Benue states. Vice President Kashim Shatima, who made this known at the inauguration of projects executed by the Borno state government in the last 100 days, said that the housing projects were part of a broad plan by the federal government to address conflicts in the north. In case you missed any of the news bulletin or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV or log on to our website on wwwtv 360 com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria, on Facebook at TV360 Online.
In business, the Nigerian Safety Investigation Bureau, NSIB, says it has commenced investigation into an incident involving an Embraer ERJ-145 with nationality and registration max 5NBWY belonging to the United Nigeria Airlines. According to a statement released by Fifth Director of Public Affairs and Consumer Protection Tunji Okentumi, the NSIB said the aircraft, which was en route Lagos from Abuja, on landing on runway 18R off Murisala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Lagos, skidded off the runway. The bureau said there were 51 passengers and four crew members on board the aircraft, but there was no injury or fatality, and is soliciting information from the general public in the form of pictures or video to assist it in conducting a comprehensive investigation. And Nigerians have been called upon to develop and show their love for the country. This call for patriotism was made by the Lagos chairman, Nigeria Institute of Public Relations, Comfort Abbott Wankwo at a press conference in Lagos to announce the activities to celebrate the 2023 edition of its annual Lagos PR Week, which ends with its 34th annual general meeting. Wankwo emphasized on the need to show the younger generation the value system and ways to be a successful public relations manager. We are the perception managers. Some things you see out there are not really what it is. If you and I choose to tell a lot of good about this country, we will move from there. If you travel all over the world, they have their backside. They have their dark side. But they've chosen to hide those ones and push forward what is good. If patriotism is brought to bear in all that we do, you will see that it is all about us. And again, if we are ready to change as individuals and then as profession, we will be able to get that done. Mentoring program, because we realize that we need the younger ones to be on the same uh, page, uh, on the same page with us in this profession. So as the disruption and innovation is coming in in public relations, we want them to be part of it so that when they take over, they can up the ante for this profession. The African Union has formally taken its seat as a new member of the G20 at the invitation of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The widely anticipated move on the scores India's wide-ranging agenda to elevate the global multilateral forum's focus on the global south in its presidency of the G20 this year. The 55-member bloc of African nations joins the European Union as only the second regional organization to become a permanent member of the G20. In sport, Arsenal forward Riz Nelson has won the 2022 and 2023 Premier League's Game Changer of the Season Award. The Gunners confirmed this with a photo of Nelson and the award on their ex handle. The award is in recognition of Nelson's stoppage time winner against Bournemouth at the Emirates in March. The goal saw Arsenal come from 2 0 down to win 3 2 as they continue their push in the title race. Well, that's the size of a news bulletin. Thank you for staying with us. I am Mary Kanu.